Okay, in this uh, session we're going to cover the domain and range for something that is not written out as a set of ordered pairs, rather it is continuous. Any data that is continuous is any type of data that is graphically shown with a line. Okay, so right here I now have a continuous set of data. And the thing that you need to realize is that no matter how small of a line you have, there is an infinite amount of possibilities for answers, for inputs and outputs. Between the numbers 0 and 1, there is an infinite amount of numbers that you can't even begin to list out all the points. So, last session we were talking about discrete data. Discrete data, you can list them all out because it's just a, fin a finite set of data. Meaning, I'm giving you a set of ordered pairs, and that's all I'm giving you, and that's all I care about. Whereas this one, I am now not talking about just specific points. I am talking about all the data that runs between these points. So since I can't even begin to tell you that, what I want to know is that from left to right, what are all the x values that my data covers? And from top to bottom, I want to know what are all the data values that my y values cover. So what we need to know is take a little note of that we have the y-axis and we have the x-axis. So x-axis runs from left to right, right to left, however you prefer to look at it. And the y-axis runs from up to down or down to up, whichever way you prefer to look at it. But what I am just simply covered is I am taking a snapshot and I am looking at this particular function. And I want to know what are all of the possible y values that I could have. Now, if I go to this graph and I go up to 1 and I go over, I'm going to hit 1 here and I'm going to hit 1 there. So, there are repeats for some of these in this particular case, but I want to know all of them. If I went just a tiny little bit higher, guess what? I'm at 1.1. 1 .1. So, 1.1 1 .1 is 1. And then I could play another game if I even went just a tiny bit farther where it was 1.11. 1 .11. So we could sit here and play this game all day where if I said 1.1 was a point, you would say 1.11 is a point. I could then say 1.111 is a point, and we would be here until all eternity, and we would still never come up with all the points that are on this line. So the way we show that is with a compound inequality. This data for this set, if I'm going to look at the domain and the range is going to be the set of all x values such that where all your um, this line covers and the range is going to be all the y's values such that which ones does it cover. So what do I need to observe here is if I take a look at domain. Domain runs along the x-axis from left to right. So what I need to take a look at here is all my points. Now I have closed circles here and they're all over the place. So what I need to find is how far left does my data go and how far to the right is my data going. So when now I begin to look at this particular set, I notice I have a closed circle all the way to the left at negative two. So the x coordinate here is negative two. And I have no other x coordinate farther than negative two. And note that I'm not writing it as an ordered pair because at this particular time I don't care about the y because all I care about is the x value. And I follow along here, and when I'm following along here, I'm just checking that there's no breaks, because if there was a skip in the line, then that value wouldn't count. But here, it's just a solid line, and I keep going, and I find out that this one up here, this particular x-coordinate, the x value here is positive 4. So what I now have is that I've got a set of data for my x's starting at negative 2 and ending at 4. Now, I'm not just going to pick this point here because it's an actual dot, because you need to remember that all along this line, these are all dots, okay? And you can't begin, okay, to be able to name them all. So these are all little dots that are creating this line. So, and they're all very, very right next to her, so this is why I have this line. So if I take a look at the domain, I need to describe this domain as starting at negative two, and my x values aren't going to get any smaller. If you notice, my x values never get any smaller than negative 2. They stop right at negative 2. So my x values are going to be actually getting bigger. So I need to show that negative 2 is less than or equal to, in this particular case with this closed circle, than x. Now, I also need to look at something else. And what I need to look at is if I said that x was greater than negative 2, well, guess what? I could have picked 5. But 5 is not part of this, uh, this domain. 
Because if I take a look at this, my farthest x value is 4. So I can't just strictly say, oh, x is greater than negative 2. I have to take a look at it and say that x is also going to have to be restricted by it being less than 4. So I just write on the other side of it, less than or equal to 4. And then that's my domain. I now also begin to look at the range, because I want the domain and the range. So I come down here and I look at where is my lowest y and where is my lowest x. Now for this particular function, my line does not ever travel any farther down than y being negative 2. And then it doesn't travel any higher than y being equal to 4. So what I now have, ironically in this case, is my lowest y value. It starts at negative 2 and they start going up. So my lowest value is negative 2, and it is less than or equal to. Now because I'm talking about the range and I'm talking about the vertical change here as opposed to the horizontal, that I now need to talk about this in the sense of the y-axis, which is y values are going to be greater than negative 2, and they are going to be less than or equal to 4. So what I've now created is I've shown that by this set of data here, all I'm just strictly saying is that my x values are all between negative 2 and positive 4, and all of my y values are in between negative 2 and 4. So any point here, if you note, that if I were to pick a point on this line, is going to be either above negative 2 or below 4, and in this case 1, 1 is bigger than negative 2, and it is less than 4. Even if I came up here and picked 3, I could pick 3.9. 3.9 is less than 4, but it is greater than negative 2, so I am okay. So this is how you show it for a set of continuous data. The way you need to show this is through compound inequalities. So I hope that helps in your study session, and see you next time.